Eight Mindsets That Crush Personal Contentment The French Enlightenment philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau famously said that man was born free, but everywhere he is in chains. Of course, Rousseau meant this in political terms, but this is also true in spiritual and emotional terms. Most of the time, we hold the key to the mental prisons that we live in. We define the world in neat, tidy little boxes that spell out what we can and cannot do, who we can and cannot be, and where we can and cannot go. Almost all of this is arbitrary, but they are all too real because we make them real by believing in them. We were born free, but we refuse to turn the lock of the mental prison that we choose to be in. And much of this situation can be tied to eight mindsets that work to hold us back and drag us down. Oftentimes, we're unaware that we have these mindsets. Still, the sooner you get out from under the influence of these, the sooner you will live a life of adventure, meaning, fulfillment, and paradoxically enough, control. See if you can identify any of the following mindsets. Letting go of them prepares you to live life to your fullest potential. You have to always be in control. The first mindset that crushes personal contentment is the very idea that you must always be in control of all areas of your life. Now, it doesn't take much human experience to figure out just how wrong this is. You've heard of Murphy's Law. The worst things happen at the worst time. You probably also know that life is what happens when you have other plans. Life has its own agenda. It spins on its own axis, regardless of our best laid plans. And, unfortunately, the more we choose to believe that we have to be always in control, the less likely we will be happy. You see, when it comes to life, you have to give it a lot of wiggle room. You can set goals, you can plan ahead, but ultimately, at the end of the day, you have to accept what you get out of the process. Nine times out of ten, if you take care of things the right way and you put in the best effort, things will pan out roughly the way you want it. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to fit the exact picture that you had when you were planning your goal, but it can come close enough. Unfortunately, if we believe that we always have to be in control, we rob ourselves of the joy of achievement. We can never quite seem to get there because we feel that we did not control all the variables. We refuse to be happy. Everyone cares about what's going on in your life. Another debilitating mindset that holds people back is the idea that the world is a stage and they are at the center of the spotlight. I don't know how to tell you this, but there are 8 billion people on this planet and the number is continuing to grow. Everybody's got enough problems of their own. While it may seem that everybody makes a big deal of your shortcomings and personal drama, at the end of the day, they don't really care. They've got too much on their plate already. Still, we would like to believe that everyone cares about what's going on in our life. It's as if we're in a microscope. What we're really doing is we are mentally putting ourselves in the center of the universe, which is the farthest place from where we really are. It gives us a sense of control. It definitely gives us a sense of importance. But the problem is, the more you believe that everyone cares about what's going on in your life, the more likely you will try to live your life to please others. This is a serious problem because you have to live your life based on what matters to you. Of course, this has limits. You can't live your life to harm other people. You can't live your life in a way that other people are hurt. But at the end of the day, you have to live your life for yourself. You have to take care of yourself. Self-care is the foundation of responsibility. Unfortunately, the more we hang on to this distorted belief that people really care about what's going on in our lives and look to us as some sort of center of gravity, the more likely we would live our lives to please other people or to live up to impossible standards. Everyone looks up to you for support or as a standard. This mindset is just a variation of what I discussed immediately above. You have to understand that people have enough problems of their own. While people can voice their support and express their admiration of you, at the end of the day, their standard has to be themselves because that's what they're going to come back to. At the end of a person's life, I can guarantee you that they're not going to be thinking about how they lived up to somebody else. Instead, they're going to be examining the kind of life they actually lived. It all comes back to that point. We all have a home, whether we accept it or not. Unfortunately, when we believe that everybody looks up to us, either for assistance or to set us up as some sort of standard, then we end up playing all sorts of games with ourselves where we often create standards that are meant to impress others, but are not really rooted in who we are. Again, living your life for others is commendable. To a certain degree, it's praiseworthy. But at the end of the day, you still have to take care of yourself. You still have to base your life on truth. And one of the worst lies you can play on yourself is to think that you are some sort of standard. Not because the standard truly comes from your experiences and your values, but because you want to impress other people. You lose sight of the truth trying to become the truth to others. It's paradoxical and, ultimately, 
destructive. Your parents and loved ones will not be happy if you are not perfect. Human beings have a tendency of blowing things out of proportion. This, of course, comes from the fact that we tend to read too much into the signals that people give us. Every single day, people are saying stuff to us. They're definitely sending all sorts of verbal and nonverbal signals. We interpret these. That's what we constantly do. But we get into trouble when we read meaning into them that is not logical. We stretch the rational meaning that we can possibly read into something. It's not uncommon for people to look at reality based solely on what they think is real. In other words, they're not looking at objective truth. Instead, they're protecting their own insecurities, inadequacies, or misconceptions. Unfortunately, one of the most common ways we do this is when we think that the people who love us the most in this world expect us to be perfect. It may be based on some sort of objective statement, but we blow it out of proportion. We stretch it to the point that it breaks, and it breaks away totally from reality. You have to understand that your parents expect the best from you because they want you to live the best life. But they also are adult enough to understand that, ultimately, you have to find your own way. All of us have to do that. Unfortunately, this is very easy to distort into a sick sense of obligation. We read this as a demand for perfection. It's very easy to see why this takes place in the first place, because when you're a kid, your parents have standards. An A is an A, and an F is a failing grade. Objective standards. And it is an important part of your development as a human being to know how these standards work. But somewhere along the way, you confuse the existence of standards with this exaggerated sense of obligation that you have to be perfect. Let me tell you, it would be unreasonable and downright cruel of your parents to expect you to be perfect when they are not perfect themselves. The truth is, there is no such thing as a perfect human being. We are in no position to expect perfection from others when we ourselves are not perfect. But unfortunately, all of this is lost to you if you suffer from this mindset. Instead, you read into the signals that you're receiving from your parents and the ones that you truly admire and respect the most in this life as a call to perfection. It first starts out as having a standard, but it gets twisted and exaggerated into something that oppresses you. Believe it or not, standards are supposed to push you upward and outward. They are what make you successful. They are what make you a better person, but they have limits and we cannot read into them all sorts of insecurities that they become shackles. And that's precisely what happens to people who think that everyone else looks up to them for support or some sort of standard, or that loved ones will not be happy if they're not perfect. You always have to be better than others. Another debilitating mindset that people suffer from is the idea that they always have to be better. This is going to be impossible because all of us are a mix of peaks and valleys. Seriously. Even Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos, the world's richest man, is flawed, limited, and lacking in some areas of their life. If you don't believe me, just imagine Jeff Bezos comparing himself to Michael Jordan in terms of basketball skills. I know that's a ridiculous example, but that's precisely the point. You can't be all things to all people. You cannot be the perfect person because there is no such thing. There is no such animal. We all have angels and devils in our character. Bill Gates may be a great businessman, he may be a great innovator and an amazing philanthropist, but he's probably a lousy basketball player. The problem when you think that you always have to be better than others is that you have to beat everybody across the board. You have to be a better philanthropist. You have to be more compassionate. You have to be better looking. You have to be a better conversationalist. You have to be amazing on the basketball court, across the board. Do you see how impossible this is? Good. Let go of the mindset that you have to be better than others to allow yourself to feel fulfilled, complete, contented, and happy. It's just not going to happen. People care if you fail. This is a big one. This really flows from the mindset that everyone cares about what's going on in your life. So, when things fall apart and don't work out the way you anticipated or planned, you take it very personally. You feel less of a person. You feel like you have massively dropped the ball. Let me let you in on a secret. Everybody fails. People get divorced. People get thrown in jail. People do end up doing things that they shouldn't do. People make wrong decisions that mess up their life. Regardless of how you define it, everybody fails. Now, it's one thing to assume that people will have some level of concern for you when you're down on your luck. That's okay. That's healthy. That's the way it should be. That's why we have support networks. That's why we have loved ones like family and friends. But to take this to a ridiculous level and assume that people care and obsess about your failures is nothing less than a form of masochism. You're just beating yourself up. You have to understand that as spectacular as your bankruptcy, your divorce, your jail sentence, your disease, 
your depression or sense of personal disaster may be, at the end of the day, everybody's got their own problems to take care of. Everybody's got their own personal failures to attend to. Sure, people might sit up and pay attention and say, wow, that is harsh, or thank goodness that did not happen to me. But at the end of the day, they move on. So should you. Unfortunately, the more you think that people are obsessed about your failure, the worse your failures become. How come? Well, you're less likely to try again. You get knocked down and you stay down because you're so afraid of how people will laugh at you and point at you because you failed. You create all these reasons and excuses not to try again. Let me tell you, the only way to fail is to quit, and that's precisely what you're doing. Happiness is a destination. One of the most toxic mindsets that can get in the way of any kind of personal contentment is the idea that happiness is some sort of destination. You find yourself working to set up goals, and once you achieve them, you're still not happy because you feel that you will only be happy if certain things fall into place. Well, life being the way it is, will prevent this from happening. As awesome as things may be in your life, there will always be room for improvement. That's what makes life awesome. It's also what makes it frustrating because everything does not fall into place. There's no neatness to this. You just have to accept what you get at a certain level. In other words, you have to move on. But when you think that you will only be happy when certain things happen in your life, the more you work towards those goals, the more you realize that you can never be happy. Because once you work toward your goals, your definition of happiness or the destination that you set for yourself changes because the process changes you. Believe it or not, setting up a goal transforms your life because the work that you put in, the process that you go through, and most importantly, the setbacks that you experience change you. While all of this is going on, don't be surprised if your definition of happiness or your goals change as well. What other people think about you is more important than what you think about yourself. Finally, one mental shackle or pair of handcuffs that we need to get rid of is the idea that what people think of us is more important than what we think of ourselves. Let me tell you, at the end of the day, people have to be responsible for themselves. You have to be responsible for your own happiness, fulfillment, and contentment. And the more you think that the judgment of others trumps your own assessment of yourself, the less likely you will feel content because you're basically living your life for the approval and validation of others. At the end of the day, you're the one who's going to have to live your life, not them. You owe it to yourself to at least accept and be content with what you have set for yourself. This means accepting your decisions. And unfortunately, when we play this game with ourselves that other people's impressions, validations, or appreciation is more important than what we ourselves think about our lives, we put ourselves in a downward spiral. It really is a psychological and emotional pit. It gets worse and worse. The more we crave validation from others, the worse we feel about our decisions and our lives. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.